Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Guest Who series. I am super excited. Um, welcome to my channel. My name is Faith. I'm a Nigerian immigrant and YouTuber based in Toronto, Canada. If this is your first time here, what have you been waiting for? Please use that subscribe button down below and also click on the notification bell. So when I post a new video, you'll be the first to know. And if you are a returning viewer, you know, always a pleasure to have you around. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So yes, today's episode is, in fact, is going to be explosive because what is better than one guest? Two guests. Yes, I have two amazing people joining me today. And guess what? They are my brother, my sister, all the way from Ghana. Of course, they live in Canada, but you know, I love Ghanaian. So this is just an awesome time for me. Like you can feel the joy. I'm sure you can see it as it is radiating on the screen. So um, they are fellow YouTubers like myself. Their YouTube channel is called The Full Sense Tube. And, you know, we're going to be talking about just living and thriving in Canada in general and, you know, all other fun stuff. So without further ado, let me not waste your time because I'm sure you're more eager to see my guests. You see my face every day. So, yeah, you're probably bored with this. So drum roll, please. Introducing my guests. Hi, guys. <laughs> Hi, Faith. Yes. I, I love, love the energy. Faith. Yes, yes, a lot of ginger, a lot of ginger. Yeah, a lot of ginger, let's pepper them very well. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So nice wow. seeing you and thank you very much for having us on your Guest Who series. Oh, right. yes. Uh, they've been really yes. beneficial. We've watched a couple of them that you've had with others. So we are honored to be on, exactly. We are honored, honored. Yeah. Please, I am I'm the one that is honored. You put your notes. I said, no, I'm so happy that you guys are to do this with me so you know it's always a pleasure when i have people on my set and like i said yeah. now i have two people not just one person ah, please. yeah twice I'm, fun. A, I'm on cloud nine yeah. <laughs> i can imagine <laughs> so how has it been i mean how is everything like how is life in general in canada you know what even made you decide to come here let's start from there all the way from <laughs> what made you guys decide to relocate to canada <laughs> well I mean, I guess everything is going well by God's grace. In terms of yeah. coming to Canada, my madam here is the senior amongst all of us. So maybe I'll, I'll let her come with that first. and then I'll come in. Okay. okay so, so I came to Canada in 2015. I remember the month so well and even the day. Okay. So it was the first August 2015. And I came as a student. I came as a PhD student. So I landed in Queen's University in Kingston, Ontario. And I've always wanted to do my PhD. And so when I was in Ghana working, I started looking out for scholarship opportunities here and there. I mean, it took me a really long time to yeah. land on a scholarship. It took me like, um, let's say, five years. five years, yeah, to land on a scholarship. But I was really determined to get a PhD because I don't want to have regrets. Like, you know, I wish I got a master's. I wish I got a PhD. No, I, I don't I don't want to do that kind of talk. And I like to teach. I like academia. So I thought, OK, let me just go for it. And so by God's grace, I got the scholarship. And I, that, so that's what brought me here to Canada in 2015. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> She's really yeah, a vulgar. Cool. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, so for my for me, my story, I mean it's interesting. I always tell people that I always I mentioned Canada first in 2015 when Express mm. Entry started. And I told her that, oh, I've seen this opportunity. This is something that I'll be interested yeah. in. And then a few months down the line, you know, she was bidding me farewell to Canada. And I was like, this, this, <laughs> This is not fair now. I mean, I left how, can Ghana. You, how can you leapfrog me and, and go ahead of me? But I guess that was, that was what, you know, the opportunity God had opened for her. So hmm. I took about three years, two to three years to right. get the express entry, you know, everything together. My application mm -hmm. finally approved. And so I landed in January of 2018. So, oh, yes. yeah, I guess it was all about seeking opportunities, you know, out here and trying to challenge myself because, I mean, I'm in the tech field, right? I mean, IT mm -hmm. and I, I looked at all the cutting edge technologies and all right. the things that are happening in the world of IT. And I'm like, you know what? I must go to where the action is happening. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> yeah, and that's sure. that's basically what brought me here to Canada. So that's yeah. my story. Wow. So Kweku didn't come to Canada because of me. He wanted <laughs> to come to Canada for me. I was one. going to I was going to ask. Are you sure it's not because of you that he said I'm no, 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 that, <laughs> that's what a lot of people think. Yeah. That that's, he, that's, that's I said I mentioned Canada first. Yes, and he would have come to Canada anyway if I even mm-hmm. did come to Canada. Yeah, so. that's very likely. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, I don't know if I mentioned, they're actually a couple. I, I don't even need to tell you because you can see oh, already. You oh, can yeah. see the connection between the two. <laughs> so, yes. I mean, so which is why I was like, ah, please, we must do this together. So, yeah. so now, so how has life been really in Canada, you know, since, I mean, you've been here for years. So you, you are definitely more experienced than I am. So what would you say, how has life been in general for you guys? individually even as a couple what 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 do you what do you think yeah i think as with every you know immigrant that comes there's that initial um phase where mm-hmm. you are trying to find your feet and trying to figure things out right. and then after that i mean if god favors you and the land favors you you know things kind of get settled for you and right. you 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 are at that point where you begin, begin begin to thrive so i mean for me i'll say it's been a positive experience overall you know and i just i just i just feel that it's just been the grace of god good being good to me because i haven't had those challenges that the popular story about immigrants coming and struggling to find jobs in fact okay. i tell people that when i landed here i actually began with a with a program in conestoga college yes, exactly. and while i was in the college like three weeks into it i had recruiters who were like chasing me oh, to leave wow. school and come and start working ah, right I'm telling you, Kweku is so you serious good. hey Kweku, serious. you need to cut soap for us ah, ah i will cut it for all of you, you like I spoke with this one recruiter. She was like, why are you in school? Like, you can get a good job now. Like, I don't understand. And I had Mm. to tell her that, you know what? I still wanted to finish with the school so that I have Mm -hmm. some clinical experience. So I actually started working in my second term of school. I was combining like full-time work and full-time school. And Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just been good from that point on. I think I've already changed jobs maybe about three times since then. So it's been, I mean, I I can't complain. It's it's been good. Mm -hmm. God has been good and... I mean, all the challenges that people face, I, I don't think that I have, I'm, I can say that, oh, it's difficult for me. I've had so many mm-hmm. challenges mm-hmm. and uh, Canada is difficult. Canada is bad for immigrants. I honestly can can say that. I think right. it's been a very positive experience. Yeah, and Faith, I, I, I'll talk about my own experience, mm-hmm. but I just wanted to say something just to add to what Kweku was saying. You know, sometimes people in Africa or people all over the world, they yeah. think when you immigrate to a certain country, everybody struggles mm. like everybody struggles mm. but i think really it depends on where god needs you to be mm. and so if you invest a lot of prayer and you know that god needs me to be in canada then god will make your path straight mm. not to say like you're not going to have any challenges at all of course. but you know some people have like 90 percent challenges and and that should even tell you that your location may not be right. Mm. Mm-hmm. So what am I saying? Not that everybody is coming to Canada. So you also pick your bag and you to come to Canada. Really try and commune with God. And we are very like spiritual. We mm. take God seriously and we take God first. And so we didn't just move. We knew that God wanted us to be here. Now to my experience. So I came to school. For the little sermon. And Thank you. My little sermon. <laughs> like we my can little share the grace now. <laughs> and then we can share the <laughs> grace. <laughs> Um, and then you collect the offering and I, I sing. So I'll do the post watching for us and then we can, we can move on. So I came in 2015. I came, I did my undergrad in Ghana. Okay. Um, finished my master's in Ghana. So you can imagine. And I jumped onto mm. a PhD in Canada. You know, most of the time, students will come from Ghana, Nigeria. They come and get a master's before they do a PhD. Mm-hmm. Or people who already have master's would even come and get a second master's just to get used to you know, the education system, because mm-hmm. the truth is, it's not the same. Yeah. So my first year was a struggle. Mm-hmm. Like it wasn't easy because here I was thinking like, you know, I'm number one student in Ghana. <laughs> you know, people will come and bring their work to me. Mm-hmm. I'll edit and I come here and they cancel all my English. <laughs> oh my goodness. So it was, yeah, it was, I was getting even depressed. It wasn't wow. easy for me at all. Mm-hmm. And I sit in a classroom with Canadians who are exceptional. Most of the time, when you have Canadians on a PhD, they are exceptional. exceptional. They are exceptional. Right. So 
one Ghanaian guy, he was my senior. He told me that, you know what, Asantua, you need to work twice the Canadian. Twice and so you can imagine, yeah. I get to my office in the morning, like 8 a.m. I leave with the last school bus, like 1 a.m., 2 a.m. So I was really stressed. Oh, my goodness. Can you remember? Yeah. Like I had acne all over my face. I wasn't really taking care of myself. But I was going to church too. So that was kind of like my leisure time. Yeah. And then after one year, things started getting better. Yeah. And in the PhD program also, we have what we call comprehensive exams. And that if you fail, then they either drop you, you, you either drop out of the program or you drop onto a master's. And I'm like, God, you cannot disgrace me. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I really needed to pass. So by God's grace, I had just um, three years and mm. four months to finish my PhD because my funding could only last for three years and four months. Mm. So I didn't get the luxury of four, four years. years or some people come and they are doing one PhD yeah. for five years or six years. I told God, please give me divine speed and excellence. And mm. so that has been my story. It wasn't easy in the beginning, but I was able to see through, yeah. So, so yeah. as, as a couple now, like, how has that, how has it been living here? You know, it's, uh, yeah, <laughs> well, I, I it's not like you've lived anywhere else as a couple, but hey, you know. Yeah, but for us, it's been interesting because, I mean, yes, we were here when we, when we got married. Mm-hmm. So we traveled back home to Ghana to get married. As soon yeah. as we came, she had to leave to the U.S. for a postdoc, oh, wow. right? Yeah. So... I mean, right from the very beginning, we were long distance. Long distance. So that was like 2019, latter part of 2019. Yeah. And then COVID-19 struck. Oh, yeah. So for eight months, we, were, we hadn't seen each other. It was Canada and the oh, US. Wow. Then after that first year, that's when, because of yeah. things going online, she had a chance to come back to Canada. Yeah. So, I mean, for us, like there's been a silver lining in the COVID-19 in that it actually gave us the yeah. opportunity to, to live together. Right. Yeah, because yes. that second year, her mm-hmm. program should have even taken her outside to, you know, somewhere else. Yeah, I was but, going to Europe. Yeah, <laughs> but, but by yeah, but yeah. by God's providence, she was able to come to live in Canada. So, I mean, technically speaking, we've just been one year together. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so far, I mean, so far, so good. I think mm-hmm. Canada is, is, is good. Canada is a nice place and then also we don't have the pressures that our african society oh, puts for at. sure <laughs> <laughs> so about it. yeah you have the peace of mind to do mm-hmm. everything that you want to do what at you your want, own at pace, your pace. right yeah, at exactly. your own pace like no one is giving you pressure and you know you go out and you meet people and yeah. all mm-hmm. this kind of thing so it's been very healthy for us i think exactly. it's, it's I been very good for us it's given us a chance to actually focus on knowing each other more mm-hmm. you know building the marriage relationship mm-hmm. working on yeah. becoming friends yeah because it's just us yeah it's just yeah. us, I mean, it's exactly. us. Yeah. so exactly. it, it's been positive at least with the little community that we have mm-hmm. here also supporting us and helping us in little little ways i think it's been a really positive experience for us and yeah, yeah. we are grateful to god for this opportunity to be here yeah. yeah so i have lived in the u.s i've lived here in canada mm-hmm. and honestly i would pick canada i think don't canada, let them hear <laughs> I, I think i, I mean I, I still work in the u.s but i i like the you know the peace the, the, the quiet the calmness in the u.s we just we move like yeah you know, we everybody always on, the move. <laughs> always on the move and so mm-hmm. i i like the kind of canadian feel yeah right. yeah right. okay <laughs> honestly you guys have so much like in fact <laughs> at, at this point i'm just gonna say it. i'm gonna have to bring you guys separately because quick we need I, to talk uh, about that your <laughs> it and oh, yeah. we need to talk about your education like there's just yeah. so much you guys are so loaded like i really oh, yeah. i need to lot. milk you dry from from a <laughs> subscriber yeah 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 we, can maybe <laughs> yeah, 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 no, we need to do that we need because we need yes, to talk exactly. about your, your prof- i think you have very interesting professions and <laughs> you know careers so yeah that's definitely something so yeah. um i think one of the things that you mentioned which is key is that <laughs> You know, people, I think there's this misconception, right? That, oh, uh, you know, when you come as an immigrant, you have to struggle, you have to. And it's not for every, every I always say on my channel every time that, look, everyone's journey is different, right? right. So, right. you know, the fact that, you know, maybe a couple of people have had negative stories doesn't mean that that is the general consensus, right? Exactly. So, yeah. like, I mean, I'm happy that you guys had such positive experiences when it came yeah. to like looking for jobs and all of that. So, you know, I think people just need to know that look hey it's not it, it's not always all negative right just right. do your best pray about it and then you know let's let's you know, you'll see how things will work for you 
So, exactly. yeah. so, okay. So in terms of like, you know, what would you, what would you advise guys? Because there are a lot of people, you know, some people are uh, in like hundred WhatsApp groups, just trying to get to Canada. <laughs> <laughs> I know, you know WhatsApp groups about relocating to Canada. Uh-uh. Of that okay. stuff. So, what would you advise? You know, people coming in, like, are there things that maybe you wish you knew before you relocated to Canada that maybe people can learn from such experiences? Uh, babe, before you go to the express entry thing, you know, Faith, I, I think that, you know, we always tell people to do this express entry, express entry, but mm. if you are listening to us now and you are someone who wants to go to school too, you can come through that route. Right. I mean, mm. that's the route I came through. Mm-hmm. So I finished my education and then I think just before I finished is when I applied for right. the express entry. Otherwise, I was going to get that work permit. Because when you do a PhD, you have like, you get the work permits that will allow you to work in Canada for three years, right? Yeah. But I never actually got that because my my PR came before that work permit. And so I had to pause it and collect my money back Mm. from the the, the government of Canada. So I just wanted to throw it out here that that Mm. is an option. Thank especially you. for people yeah. who are not thinking about you know and so many of our people when you say IELTS they, yeah, they like, don't oh, no. buy <laughs> that kind of thing I mean yeah. reaching routes to is not easy mm-hmm. you know unless you have your own money you mm-hmm. can pay for your own college like yeah. me I didn't have that money so I had to pray for scholarship so I'm just throwing it out here that it is an option you option. can decide to come as a student so I'm going to let Kweku talk about his uh, who well, I mean, in terms of <laughs> anyone who is thinking about relocating, yeah. I think what I'll say is that you need to know what it entails and really understand. Mm. You know, otherwise it will just be a wish. It will just be a dream. They said that if what mm. if dreams were horses, beggars would beggars ride, would right? Ride. Exactly. If wishes were horses, <laughs> beggars would ride, right? Mm. Like I feel that a lot of people want to relocate but then they are not willing to put in the effort exactly. and put in the work like mm-hmm. you need to understand that it's not something that is going to happen at the snap of a finger no. you know it's going to take some time i tell people it took me almost two to three years to go through the whole process so you need to have that mentality that look it's not a quick fix there is no quick fix thing about relocating no, to canada not at all. you need to have it in <laughs> the mind that this is going to take me some time and and pace yourself accordingly. Don't put pressure on yourself that you want to come to Canada tomorrow. So, mm. I mean, people are looking for shortcuts and other alternative no shortcut. ways which are not exactly legal to come in. I wouldn't advise anyone to do that because, you know, Canada is so strict on that. If you misrepresent or you bring forth any false information, you could be banned mm. for up oh, to yeah, you know, yeah. five or ten years. Oh, and yeah. who knows even after that, if you would ever be, you know, given the chance to, 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 to apply for these opportunities. So I want to tell people that Understand that it takes time. Right. Put in the work. Be patient. Do your research. Do your so, research. So, so, so important. People don't like to research at yeah. all. Things. You can give them all the information, like all the link. And people yeah. still come ask you questions, ask you questions that right? the link should respond to. And it's amazing, right? Yeah, because if you want to really thrive in this system, you should be able to go through that process. Mm-hmm. Yes. Before even coming here, you should have... Mm-hmm your mind conditioned in a way that look things need effort to be put in in order to be successful right exactly so that is one thing that i'll tell anyone who is willing to relocate here whether you are single or you are married you know mm-hmm. have a family or you yeah. don't you still need to do your research and put in the work and know the right information that you need that would help you be successful on that on that adventure yeah and on the job market too on the job market you need to be really uh, like hard working oh yeah it's not like back in our countries where you can go to work and you walk <laughs> around and that kind of thing here you need to work yeah. i mean when we say we are working from home <laughs> we are actually <laughs> working, working. Oh, yeah. you know exactly. work redefined <laughs> yeah <it's working laughs> fine because your your manager will see your supervisor mm-hmm. you have yeah. targets yeah, you expect- have timeline used to be productive yes and for me personally i like to paint africa well oh, i like you to say we picked this black lady and mm-hmm. because of her we want to pick another black lady, black lady. you know that's the example that i want to set everywhere i go yeah. so that i i i, I increase the chances, our, our chances of other you know, people black. to also get yeah into and, these and even spaces. when i was on my postdoc i was the first african black female to be selected on that program. So I'm like, you know, I can't be selfish. 
I need to think about my fellow African ladies so that yes. tomorrow they can also be employed. So when you are coming here, know that hmm. you, the dollar is not on the ground. No, no, no. <laughs> you have to work hard. Yeah, yeah. 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 So. Honestly, what what you just said now just made so much sense, and it just reminded me so much of my husband because he always says that, like, look, you have to paint, you know, paint Africa yeah. well. When you're yeah. when you're when you're hired into a uh, a company. Put in right. or put in the work, you know, so yeah. that yeah. because of you, you know, the opportunities will be open to other people. Like you know, be like, oh, yeah. this guy, yeah. this guy is so good. Yeah. Oh my god, maybe yeah. anybody yeah. from, you know, they will be open yeah. to hiring exactly. more people like you. Exactly. You know? But if you just go there, and you do a shabby job, they're just like, oh gosh, this uh, is <laughs> this not right. not about you. It goes, it goes a long way. I mean, mm-hmm. anywhere you go as an African, you carry. You, your yes. the continent you are representing you. the continent, the continent. Yeah. exactly yeah. and, so and already think we are in the minority yeah. Yeah. yeah already we are in the minority mm-hmm. so we don't want to keep being the minority exactly well yeah yeah so. yeah so that's a very good point actually i mean <laughs> you know see this conversation we can go on and on which is why i'm, I'm saying to you guys we need to have a second we need to have a definitely, second yeah. definitely. oh we you know we yes. are coming back yes. <laughs> for sure <laughs> but you know the continent will not forgive me. Even like my Nigerian subscribers will not forgive me if I don't talk about Nigerian jollof and Ghana jollof. So please don't allow them to be upset with me. Can we just trash that issue right now? Oh wow. Faith, I have a story to share. Okay. <laughs> don't hear that story. And yes, I've shared please. this story with Kweku a number of times. But I told you that I have so many Nigerian friends. In fact I love Nigerians. Oh, and I have we love so you back. Nigerian friends. <laughs> So when I when I was a student, we were in this Bible study group and there were so many Nigerians. And one guy, you know, the guys, the Nigerian guys who can cook. And mm-hmm. the guy believed in himself, like he can really cook. So we had a, a one Pot, Bible study Pot dedicated. Okay. Yeah, it was a potluck, yeah. but mm-hmm. was actually dedicated to cooking Nigerian jollof rice. Okay. Oh, and wow. so this guy, he got everything, like we got everything for him. He said he wanted basmati rice, <laughs> like all the, all the nice things. We got it for this guy. And so we had about 90% of the people there Nigerians. I will, I am a Ghanaian, so most of the time I, 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 I'm quiet so that they don't beat me. <laughs> so if I say anything, maybe they all pause and beat me, so I'm quiet. So this guy cooked everything and he was taking us through the process. So I was really looking forward to eating the rice. Mm-hmm. And when we finished, they dished the rice and I ate. And I'm like, okay, so is this the Nigerian <laughs> jollof Oh, rice? God. But What's then, that <laughs> The funny thing, all the Nigerians there, they were saying, wow, it takes so nice. Wow, it takes so nice. And I'm like, maybe there's something wrong with my taste buds. Your taste buds. I'm going to package some, take it home. And then the next day I'll eat it as lunch in right. school. So the next day I carried the food to school and another Nigerian friend, he's one of my best friends. I'm like, you know, this is the, I have my lunch. Do you want to eat together? He said, oh, yes. I said, oh, this is the food that Nigerians eat. He said, oh, Nigeria, let's eat. This guy started eating. I'm like, Asanta, where did you bring this rice from? I said, your fellow Nigerians eat. He said, Nigeria, rice is bad. He said, this is no good, oh. This is no good, oh. And I'm like, really? So I'm like, but he said, but it's, it's, he started blaming the guy. That is not all Nigerian. Right. I'm blaming the guy. Too. I'm blaming. Yeah. In fact, look now that you have said it, I'm upset. So I need to redeem our image. Uh-huh. When uh-huh. Are, in fact, it. we need to do a vlog where I will bring jollof rice. All right. Of you, and then you bring your Ghana jollof because yes. that Please. guy must be punished. How dare he? <laughs> yeah. So I recently had a conversation with another gentleman. Who, there was like a, a meetup here, and there was. Ghanian, there was Ghanaian jollof which was served because one of the organizers was Ghanaian and this whole jollof thing came up and I was like you know what let's not even go there because of how it tends to become you know yeah, an argument. and he was like you know what no let's not make this an argument but rather than thinking about which one is better than the other mm-hmm. let's just agree that each one has its unique taste unique taste yeah. okay and I'm like so. okay I think that that makes sense so yeah, yeah. Nigerian yeah. jollof is different from Ghanaian jollof. Each one is right. unique in its taste, and we won't really say that one is better than, than the, the other, other or other. But I mean, I guess it is what it is. Yeah, it is you what it is. I tried my jollof. That's why. Okay. <laughs> ah, 
I'm looking forward to for redeem forward. my country's image. What is that? Who is that guy? <laughs> hey, and the guy is a Ketra. He's oh a, my god, no, yeah. please say no more. Say no more. He's a top <laughs> chef. And I'm like, so is this a girl? We trust you no, to we need to image. we need to meet up and do this thing. Yes. Like we, we, cannot trash, um, yes. Yes. we cannot trash it out on this episode. So yes. <laughs> then yeah. just teach us two Ghanaian stands before so that we can, you know. What I I mean, I, I should have even said Aquaba when you guys when we oh, started, yes. yeah, that's Aquaba. welcome, right? Aquaba. Yes, oh, yes. that's see, welcome. See? So well yeah. done. <laughs> Thank for that. You. I think yeah, they are the, the most <laughs> common ones. Like Nigerians will say Omo, Ghanaians will say Chale. Chale. Oh, Chale. Chale. <laughs> and I mean, yeah, other, other, other things like um, a, a popular one to that when I miss most Nigerians, most of them seem to know it is like Etisane, which is like, how are you? How are you? Oh. And then you respond, eh, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. fine. So, Please, not yeah. non Ghanaian subscribers. I hope you're here. It's the same. It's the same. Yeah, that's very yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Makes sense. I mean, when we meet up, maybe we'll do more of the slam so that, you know, yes, you yeah, can definitely. learn a bit more. So, guys, do you <laughs> want to talk about your YouTube channel? I mean, like, like I said earlier, um, guys, they have a YouTube channel called The Full Sense Tube. I'm going to link it on the screen and I will also put it in the yeah. description box. Um, yep. I mean, they're actually very good. So you check their channel out. Thank you. Okay? Thank so, you. <laughs> so guys, you want to tell them just a little bit about your channel so that they know what yeah. to do and what to expect and all of that. Yeah, so we are one year. We actually just turned one year on oh. YouTube. Yep. And wow. um, we are so excited <laughs> about that. We focus on education. Like, you know that I, I'm in academia. Mm-hmm. So we talk about scholarships. We try to help people yeah. who want to come to school to at the graduate level, not undergrad. So masters phd so by god's grace we've been able to help a few people get into the system yep. we focus also on marriage relationships yep. um what else uh I think a little bit of immigration stuff i mean okay. we currently have only one video but even from that one video <laughs> we get a lot of people reaching out so reaching out right yeah so i think those are the things that we mostly focus on and just kind of like sharing our lives with others mm. to inspire mm. and encourage them right. just to help them see that you know they can be more they can mm. achieve their dreams and right. you know helping people to find confidence in who god has called them to be so it's, exactly. it's um yeah it's a little bit of all those things and we hope that it would be a blessing to anyone who comes across our content so oh, yeah. yeah it's been a blessing to me so for sure you know? oh, oh, <laughs> yeah no and, I, and i'm not saying that you know just throwing it out there it's, it's yeah, like, I know it's you need it. good. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you guys I mean, you are also doing a very good you job. You are also so. doing a very good job. Thank yeah. you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> happy to, we are happy to be friends. <laughs> please, please. We need to build this relationship and make it physical. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> okay. So, guys, I mean, you know, you know, we have to pause here, right? But, you know, you yeah. guys definitely come back because, you know, I thought yeah. enjoyed this. We'll be back. We shall be back. You. Yes, you must be back. Um. So, yes, I think this is where i'm going to say we'll take a pause and guys please like this video go to the follow sensitive as well and subscribe to their channel subscribe to mine as well um you know help us grow look it's not easy (laughs) but we keep we move we move every day every day So, (laughs) so please share this video with you know folks that need it and then um, tell them to subscribe tell them to hit the like button if there are any comments you know put them in the comment section yep, and then right. myself or or my guys here would respond to you and how do we say goodbye in uh, in ghana so that we can is there, oh, is there, is there, is there well we are to say maybe any a tree any a tree aha so guys i think we'll just say it together one two three any a tree thank you so much guys take care bye bye